so hold on hold on hold on so let's look at this problem it says that uh, it says that a uh, machined shaft shoulder the smaller di the small diameter d is 1.1 inches and the large diameter d is <clears throat> 1.65 inches and with a fillet radius of 0.1 one one inches the bending moment is 1260 pound force inch inch and the steady torsion moment is 1100 pound inch okay. uh, the heat treated steel shaft has an ultimate strength of sut which is 105 kpsi and the yield strength is 82 kpsi the reliability goal is 99 uh, percent determine the fatigue factor of safety for uh, of the design using each of the fa fatigue failure criteria described in the section to, in which we discussed in the last class and determine the yield factor of safety so he want, also wants us to check for uh, the yield uh, to figure the first thing that you would do is that you might have to go to some of your uh, solid mechanics formulas, right? And uh, that is your chapter six to determine the <clears throat> notch sensitivity factor and the uh, stress concentration factor. For example, uh, right now, the data that we have, we have the larger diameter and the smaller diameter, so uh, which is 1.1 and 1.65. Uh, and also, we have the fillet radius R, which is 0 0.11 inches, right? So from this data, you can go ahead and find your D by D, which is 1.65 over 1.1, and you get the D by D ratio. Similarly, you get your R by D ratio. Now, this is enough for us to use the figures that I just discussed with you when, when we began the class. That was A15-8, 15-9, and so on. So, from A15-9, you will find your KT, that is the stress concentration factor. And from A15-8, you will find your KTS. But... <clears throat> Uh, also, if you go to figure 6-20, there is this factor Q, and I would ask you to go to chapter 6 and look, look at it. Your uh, KF is basically, uh, if you look at equation um, 6-32, your, uh, your um, stress concentration factor is actually equal to 1 plus your um, Q, um, um, which uh, Q into KT minus 1. Okay. So from this formula, you can find your uh, stress concentration factor KF. Similarly, you can find your KF as 1 plus uh, the sensitivity factor in shear. Okay. So 1 plus Q shear into KFS, yeah, KTS which you found from the table, minus one. And putting the values in there, you will find your stress concentration factors, KTS and uh, K, uh, KFS and KF. Now, similarly, uh, <clears throat> over here, your, uh, your um, uh, S Excuse me, sir, G. 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 Now, so you will find your uh, SE dash, and uh, for SE, okay, when you find your SE, uh, your SE depends on different factors, and I'm I'm also of the opinion that you would have looked at it in your solid mechanics that this SE will be equal to SA times SB times SC times SD times SE, and so on. And, 
uh, well, well, sorry, sorry. No, then let's not represent them with S. We will say your SE is equal to KA times KB times KC times KD times KE. And these are all different factors multiplied by your SE dash. So this will be the corrected one. For example, the effect of the environment, um, the, the effect of corrosion and all these would be taken into account. And these are all those factors. Again, if you want to review that, go to uh, chapter six and have a review of that. Okay. So you will find your SE and it is not necessary that all your these factors are active in there. Some will be uh, contributing towards it and some, some not. So let's say that you see this is your SE. Okay. Now, uh, from, from the given data, we know that how many moment, uh, we are, we are, there is always uh, already moment given to us and the torque is also given to us with the, the statement that it is steady. So when it is steady, that would means your, mean that your M, M and T, A are zero. Okay. Um, therefore, applying, you know, the D Goodman equation, one over N is equal to, there was something on the right hand side, you just need to plug in those values and you get your factor of safety uh, <clears throat> for that. Okay. Because you know all the, the rest of the values. Similarly, if you go ahead and calculate your uh, N with, uh, with the other criteria, which is the D Gerber criteria, the DSME and the Soderberg, you are going to find out your uh, factor of safeties. Now, there's one thing worth mentioning. Okay, you already have the diameter. Okay. Uh, let's say that diameter is some, has you know, some value that we have in the, uh, uh, if we go up, what is the diameter? 1.1 right so let's say that the diameter is 1.1 over here now this diameter is the same for all those these criteria like in the factor of safety that we get over here which one has the less lesser factor of safety which criteria calculates or gives you the lesser factor of safety Looking at these values, which one is the most, the lower one? Soderberg. Soderberg. This means that the Soderberg criteria is very conservative. Any, though the factor of safety might be up or higher but it gives you a lesser factor of safety. Therefore, this is a very conservative approach to, to so this is going to give you, if you are going to give, to use the factor of safety based on Soderberg, you are going, the result, uh, the, the, the resulting diameter is going to be higher. Uh, if you look over here, this is the most, you know, the highest value. So if you calculate your diameter using the DASME elliptic criteria, you are going to get a, a, a smaller value of your diameter. Okay. Now, <clears throat> um, you can calculate, you know, your stresses as we know that sigma, a, we have, we have already derived equations for sigma A dash and sigma M dash. Those are equations 7 dash 5 and 7 dash 6. <clears throat> taking uh, the Goodman uh, criteria um, um, application, uh, it, it which will give you one over n is equal to sigma a dash over se plus sigma m dash over sut, and you can find your uh, factor of safety over here. Okay. Uh, similarly, you can go ahead and find your sigma max. And why do you want to find that? Because you want to find out okay, what is your yield fa yielding factor of safety as he described. So uh, yielding factor of safety comes out to be 4.5. Now beyond this, these are alternative methods that you can also go with and uh, find your, um, your factor of safety with that. But the first equation is enough for you.
ठीक है जी ना लेट सी वी जस्ट टॉक्ट अबाउट अगेन लेट्स लुक एट दिस प्रॉब्लम इट से अगेन दैट द प्रॉब्लम आर लेंथी बट since we made our concept that first we we calculated the bending stresses due to fatigue sigma a and sigma m dash then the torsional stress sigma uh, tau a and tau m dash and from those we combine those with the von mises criteria and find out our sigma a and sigma m and then we can also find out the maximum uh, stress in the in the shaft so this is the way to go and we can calculate the the shear force the bending moment the slope and the deflection in the shaft at positions which at which it is necessary so in this problem it's um, a part of a larger case study and this it, is it, chapter 18 for it but uh, let's have a look at this it says that a double reduction gearbox design has developed to the point that the general layout and axial dimension of the counter sh uh, shaft carrying two spur gears okay has been proposed as shown in figure 7-10 so we are going to look at figure 7-10 okay uh, this is figure 7-10 and it's simple don't look at the dimensions though it looks a little bit messy but what we have here is that this is this pink that you see this is the shaft okay this is the shaft and it has different sections now there is a gear mounted over here and a gear mounted over here so this is gear 3 and gear 4 we also have a bearing over here which is bearing a and another bearing b and all the dimensions are given to you okay they can this is 0.25 0.75 1.75 and so on and these dimensions which is d1 d2 these are the different diameters of the sections of the shaft okay d6 and d7 so i think the figure is clear now now um, <clears throat> let's see what else does he say he says that the gears and bearings are located and supported by shoulders okay ji we did see shoulders over there and <clears throat> held in place with retaining rings the gears transmit torque through keys okay gears have been specified as shown allowing the tangential and radial forces transmitted through the gears to the shaft being determined as follows what is w23 w23 is the force the wt23t is the 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 force uh, which is 540 pound force w54 is given to you and w54 radial and similar w23 r uh, these are the forces that gear 2 is exerting on 3 or 5 is exerting on 4 and 4 is exerting on 5 theek hai ji where the subscript t and r represent the tangential we already know this from our gears theek hai ji and the subscript 2 3 means the force exerted by gear 2 and gear 5 so we already know the, the convention theek hai ji he says that um, sufficient fatigue and static stress capacity for infinite life of the shaft with minimum factor of safety of 1.5 so this is what we are interested in okay the factor of safety is 1.5 theek hai ji now so what would we do first of all <clears throat> dekhe we already know that we have a bearing over here and a bearing over here that is the support theek hai ji so and and we have a gear over here and a gear over here which has two kinds of forces the tangential force and the radial force so we'll take those planes okay and find out the reactions in those planes um 
find the torque in the shaft between ge the gears, which is equal to T, and that is W23 times R, which is D3 by 2. So, uh, because the diameter over there is uh, uh, the third diameter, which is D3. So, you found out your torque over there. Okay. Um, and now you will go ahead and find your shear force bending moment in in this plane okay. um, so in 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 both the planes where the forces are a radial and tangential you will find in those two planes your shear forces and your uh, bending bending moment okay. now go ahead and combine those because uh, those are orthogonal planes so we know that square of the one component plus square of the second component under the root will give you the total uh, uh, force, the total moment. Okay. So we have basically superimposed those over each other. Now, uh, so we have um, our MA and our TM and those two we know that they are zero if it is steady. Again, now you will go and assume a general fillet radius, which we consider that we use standard uh, values for these. Okay? So for that, your KT is 1.7, KTS is 1.5 uh, from table 7-1, which we said that you will use initial, the estimated values, estimated values to determine the diameter. So your, uh, these are your uh, case, the stress concentration factors. Choose uh, a material. And let's say that we want the 1020 CD uh, <clears throat> steel with SUT equal to 68 kPSI and SE equal to, uh, for SE, your um, uh, KA, from equation 6-19, again, you will go there and find it over there. So, up is a SE calculate, karenge, which is a 27 kpsi. Now, using the uh, criteria, let's say we use the D Goodman criteria, and from the D Goodman criteria, your diameter, which is 1.65 inches. Now, all estimates have probably been conservative, so select the next standard size uh, below 1.65 inches and check D, which is 1.625. So he's saying that since we have used a conservative approach, therefore we can just choose, let's just take uh, 1.625 uh, is the next diameter that we will, we will uh, choose, the next standard one. So we chose this. And now <clears throat> a typical D by D ratio for the support. Now you are going to find out your KT, KTS and, and all those using those equations and come up with your um, diameter uh, with your stresses and come up with your factor of safety because you already have your value of 1.625 for the diameter. Similarly, go ahead and find uh, your shear, uh, your uh, sorry, yield uh, factor of safety that comes out to be 2.64. Now, um, you can use any criteria in here. Uh, you also check the diameter at the end of the keyway. And, and for that, go ahead and find your, uh, your uh, factor of safety. That is 1.17. Similarly, um, one more thing. What happens when uh, when you have a key? What happens to the key? The key and key should be the when we design uh, a shaft using a key. Key is basically the weakest link, and it should be kept weakest because we want it to fail, right? So when it fails, it saves your uh, shaft. And it saves your uh, pulley or gear or whatever you have. Um, key is very inexpensive. 
Therefore, this is the weakest one that you would uh, you would uh, use. So go ahead and find your factor of safety for that. Um, check for uh, the factor of safeties in these different. Um, <clears throat> And um, they all are or um, are above. So you to vote in the SRG? G? G? So you to vote in the problem is yes. yes, they are going to be lengthy. So it's just finding the factor of safety is in different. <laughs> and I already said, uh, sir, it. it's not new. This. Uh, sir. So go ahead and find your uh, your D1. Since, since it's symmetrical, so your D1 is equal to D7, which is 1 inch, 1.4 inches, and D3 and D5 are 1, 1.625 inches, and your D4 is 2 inches. So <clears throat> now, the, once these are determined, these are just your diameters for the shaft. Achha, one more thing over here. In the deflection considerations, let's see. Uh, you will see, uh, looking at this problem, it says that a preliminary shaft geometry was obtained on the basis of the design for stresses. In, in the previous problem, we just, dis we just considered stresses. The resulting shaft is shown in figure 7-12, which is this one. And these were the diameters that we got or we calculated from there. Now, it says that what is a simpler it's uh, what what do we have here is that it says that the resulting in this check that the deflections and slopes at the gears and bearings are acceptable so what would you do again you will go ahead and find your slopes and uh, deflections so again you would uh, say that it is um, uh, so deflection and this is the slope. We know the bending moment and shear. So in those planes, you would go ahead and find that in XY plane and in your XZ plane. And then now once you get these values, they can, you can tabulate them. The left bearing plane, your XY, XZ plane may itna, XY plane may itna, and so on. So